Now at 11, a plane goes down in the gorge, what witnesses saw just before the crash. A business is ransacked days before its biggest event of the year. And braving the storm, a woman ventures out in a hurricane to save a cat clinging to a fence. And it's the return of Friday night flights from Salem to Vancouver, thanks to Park Rose. We have all the high school highlights. Your news starts now. And we begin with breaking news of a possibly stolen dump truck. Police had to spike its tires to get it to stop. Add to that part of its load of gravel spilled across I-5 and Barber Boulevard. Barber is shut down right now north of Capitol Highway. KGW's Mike Benner live in southwest Portland Forest near the scene. Mike. Well, Dan, this is a wild one, and believe it or not, I actually saw the start of it when I was heading back to the station from dinner break. I was heading uh, northbound on I-5, and I noticed a dump truck stopped in the southbound lanes between NATO and Corbett. That's where this started. This is where it ended, right outside the old barn, sports bar and grill on Southwest Barber. You'll, Barber. you'll notice the uh, dump truck right here. Uh, several of the wheels are down to the rims. You'll see some tires laying here on the sidewalk, a lot of skid marks. It is an absolute mess, a big stretch of Southwest Barber uh, shut down, uh, at least on the northbound uh, side at this late hour. Uh, now, as I uh, explain how this all went down, I want to show you some uh, witness video just into the KGW newsroom. Uh, we can tell you this all started around 8 o'clock tonight. A lot of calls into 911 of a dump truck driving southbound on I-5 extremely slowly, and that's not all. This dump truck was actually uh, dropping its load, dropping gravel all over the interstate. Well, we can tell you uh, that the dump truck exited I-5 southbound at Barber and continued driving slowly. We know that officers used several uh, spike strips, several sets of spike strips to try to get this dump truck to stop. It did not. It continued driving down Barber. It eventually rolled uh, to somewhat of a stop around the old barn, uh, sports bar and grill, but it took five police cruisers to box it in, to, to get it to come to a complete stop. What a wild story. Not too uh, long ago, we caught up with a man who works nearby and witnessed uh, the arrest. I want you to take a listen. This whole area probably had, again, probably 30 cars. All of them were coming up, and he wouldn't get out of the car at first. So, of course, guns everywhere drawn, and I heard something about watch your crossfire, and I'm thinking, my, I probably shouldn't be standing out here, but then they pulled the dogs out. Finally got him out of the truck right here in the bushes, put him on the ground, and it all ended pretty good. All right, talk about an exciting evening uh, for witnesses, but I can tell you police called this a very, very dangerous situation. Listen to this. At least 35 officers were involved in this whole thing from start to finish, and believe it or not, not one person was injured, not one police officer, not one driver, not even the person behind the wheel of this dump truck. And speaking of that, we can see the logo right here on the side. It's Kaufman Excavation. And at this late hour, officers are looking into the possibility that this truck was stolen. You can count on KGW News to stay on top of the story. And uh, we'll have the very latest on air and online for now. Let's send it back to you. What a great job by the officers, and thankfully nobody was hurt. Thank you, Mike. There are new developments after a tense day at a Gresham apartment complex. Police say a man set his apartment on fire and threatened the apartment manager with a gun. Dozens of people had to be evacuated. Authorities are saying at this point the suspect may have been upset over the cost of rent, of all things. Now, before responding to the breaking news we just showed you, Mike Benner filed this report. Um, it wasn't like black smoke, it was like a brown smoke, and it was fairly heavy. Todd Muir will tell you the heavy smoke pouring out of his neighbor's apartment was the first indication something was wrong. Then he looked outside and saw a lot of police officers. As I saw more and more well-armed officers, I thought, maybe I should get out of here. <laughs> I don't want the bullets to start flying. That right there is a nervous laugh because there is nothing funny about what happened at the Hogan Woods apartments Friday afternoon. It was a, a resource intensive situation. Authorities say the smoke from the apartment was from a fire that appears to have been intentionally set by the guy who lives there.
Investigators say right before or right after igniting the fire, the man armed himself with a gun and threatened the apartment complex manager. Um, it sounds like there was some sort of dispute over the rent or his living arrangements at that, at that apartment complex. Oh, yeah, that's totally crazy. Crazy indeed. Dozens of neighbors were evacuated until officers were able to get the suspect into custody, allowing firefighters to get to work. Nobody was hurt, um, and Gresham Fire was able to then come in and do their job and extinguish the fire. And we have just learned now that the suspect is 62-year-old Robert Hauser. He has now been booked into jail. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, we've learned the names of the two men who died in a small plane crash in Hood River today. The pilot was 56-year-old Matthew Titus of California. The passenger was 55-year-old Ben Davidson from Hood River. The crash happened just after 10 this morning. The Hood River County Sheriff's Office says the plane's engine began to sputter right after takeoff. It tried to turn around, then began a nosedive at a steep angle. The NTSB and FAA will continue the investigation. Police found the man they say was involved in a deadly hit and run in Vancouver. He's accused of hitting a woman in a parking lot last night, then taking off. We've been showing you this vehicle. That's the car they believe he was driving. The woman later died at the hospital, and now 58-year-old Dennis Bogle was arrested tonight at his home in Vancouver. No word on what charges he's facing. We learned the victim of last weekend's deadly fire in North Portland was 26-year-old Sarah Oxenrider. The fire broke out early Sunday morning on North Albina. Oxenrider died yesterday in the hospital. Homicide detectives and fire investigators are still looking into this. They're asking for tips and Crime Stoppers is offering a reward of up to $2,500 for information that leads to an arrest. A health alert tonight, more confirmed deaths linked to vaping. We've been telling you this week about the case here in Oregon. Today, two more states confirmed vaping related deaths. The CDC reports the number of people getting sick is also rising. Officials in Oregon are doing their best to get a handle on this outbreak. Here is KGW's Maggie Vespa. Questions around, is this really a chemical irritation in the lung or is this really an allergic reaction or immunologic reaction? That all remains to be seen. More questions than answers in Los Angeles County today. Officials there held a news conference hours ago confirming California's first vaping-related death. They said the person who died was an adult older than 55. Few details beyond that, but the report is part of a startling spike. Five states are now confirming deaths tied to this vaping-related lung illness. California and Minnesota added to the list today. And the number of people getting sick is skyrocketing, from 215 late last month to 450, according to the CDC. People of all ages with all kinds of health backgrounds are showing up in ERs with shortness of breath. This after days of battling fevers and other flu-like symptoms. I didn't think that... That little pod could do so much damage on, on my body. So these are otherwise young, healthy individuals. The story behind Oregon's death is still hazy. Doctors can't say how long the person vaped before they died. We just know that the person had vaped recently, you know, immediately prior to the illness. Doctors with the Oregon Health Authority saying the middle-aged person died in July after buying vaping materials from two licensed Oregon dispensaries. They won't say which two or where in Oregon they are. They're working on gathering samples of these specific products to send to the feds. You know, we're trying to figure out if there's a contaminant perhaps in certain products um, if or, or if it's something to do with um, you know, modifications to existing products, we really don't know that. They add they haven't told the owners of those two dispensaries about this connection. We checked in with the Oregon Liquor Control Commission, who regulates the cannabis industry. They say they're leaving that to the OHA. So today I called and emailed the owners of close to a dozen local dispensaries here in the Portland area, and to be blunt, none of them wanted to go on camera about this. One of them told me he essentially hadn't heard the update that the person who died purchased their products at licensed Oregon dispensaries, and he was surprised by that. And then a clerk at another told me with all the new information coming out about vaping, she doesn't know what to believe and what to tell customers. Amid all this uncertainty, one point today was clear. Well, if you don't have to vape, don't do it right now. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. Okay, when we come back, this is a view you do not often see right off the Oregon coast. 
an amazing video of a humpback whale jumping right in front of a boat. Beautiful. That just makes me smile. That's beautiful. And a woman risks her life to save a cat stuck in the middle of Hurricane Dorian. Oh, poor kitty. I'm glad that worked out. All right, here's the last of Dorian zipping past New England right now. We'll let you know where its final destination will be. And then this from our sky cam out at the Reserve Golf Course out in Washington County. Look at these clouds. They're special clouds. They're called Kelvin Hemholtz waves. I'll let you know what causes them and the big changes that have already begun to happen tonight and that will really be felt this weekend.